Warmest greetings all to the Church of St. Paul the Apostle, the mother church of the Paulist Fathers. My name is Father John Collins, and I do indeed welcome you warmly. Ask you to remember in your prayers today, not only all the intentions that you have brought in your heart, but also for Kyle Mulrooney. Today is the third anniversary of his going to the Father in heaven. We know that his mom is watching us remotely, as are any number of his relatives and friends, and we greet all of them very warmly, especially you, Sheila. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the unity of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My sisters, my brothers, as we do gather this Thursday, the 31st week, ordinary time, celebrating the sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins. We trust God present among us to forgive us our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Mary, ever virgin, all my brothers and sisters to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, loose us from our bonds, bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. This we pray, gracious God, with all of our prayers. We pray in the name of Jesus. We pray in the power of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, we are the circumcision. We who worship through the Spirit of God, who boast in Christ Jesus, and who do not put our confidence in the flesh. Although I myself have grounds for confidence even in the flesh, if anyone thinks he or she can be confident in the flesh, all the more can I, circumcised on the eighth day of the race of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrew parentage, in observance of the law of Pharisee, in zeal, I persecuted the church in righteousness based on the law. I was blameless. But whatever gains I had, these I have come to consider a loss because of Christ. More than that, I even consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. The word of the Lord. Let hearts rejoice who search for the Lord. Let hearts rejoice who search for the Lord. Sing to God Sing God praises, proclaim all God's wondrous deeds. 
Glory in God's holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Let hearts rejoice who search for the Lord. Look to the Lord in all his strength. Seek to serve God constantly. Recall the wondrous deeds that God has wrought, God's portents and the judgments that God has uttered. Let hearts rejoice who search for the Lord. You descendants of Abraham, God's servants, sons of Jacob, God's chosen ones. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, God's judgments prevail. Let hearts rejoice who search for the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Come to me, all you who labor and who are burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus addressed this parable to them. What man among you having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it. And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy, and upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over the ninety-nine righteous who have no need of repentance. Or what woman, having ten coins and losing one, would not light a lamp and sweep, in, sweep the house, searching carefully until she finds it? When she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found the coin that I lost. In the same way, I tell you, there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Everybody hates Chris. This was a comedy series that began in 2005. Many of you may have tuned into it. The gist of it goes something like this. Inspired by his childhood experiences, comedian Chris Rock narrates this hilarious, touching story of a teenager growing up as the eldest of three children in Brooklyn during the 1980s. Everybody hates Chris. Maybe there are times when you feel everybody hates you. Well, maybe not exactly hates you, but people who kind of at least look down upon you. You're kind of regarded as unenlightened, uninformed kind of dismissible. Maybe it is some kind of political position you hold. You're very pro-life. 
And others just think this is a very unlightened position to hold, so you kind of shunt it off a little bit, put off by yourself. Not a very popular position among some people. Maybe you take a strong moral stance, and once again, you kind of feel that you have been pushed off onto the periphery. You feel that the government policy of separating children and families is not the right policy to pursue. This is all open for discussion. Maybe there are many who support the government policy. There you find yourself once again, uninformed, unenlightened. Could anyone think that way? And maybe you take a view of people uh, in, who are of different color or who are part of the LGBTQ community. God them as just as equal as anybody else, and you may find yourself assuming a very unpopular position. You're sort of out there on your own, a little bit like the lost sheep. But guess what? Someone's looking for you. The shepherd is out looking for you to bring you back into the fold where you belong. Of course, the shepherd is the Lord who sees you not as a political position or a moral stance or having opinions about how to look at others. In the eyes of the Lord, as in that shepherd, you're just you. And you are just fine. Sometimes we can forget that. Sometimes we feel like we are the sheep that is lost and no one is looking for us. Someone is looking for us. We are cherished and loved. And on this day that we do commemorate the passing from this life into the next of Kyle, I want to say that for all people who have preceded us in death, Kyle and others, their death is just as sacred, just as holy, just as embraced by God as any of the great saints. We are so blessed and lucky to have the Eucharist to celebrate today where once again God says, I'm looking for you. I'm looking for you because you're just fine. Let us pray for all the deceased, for all of those who are now in the embrace of God, especially for Kyle. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for those who suffer from this terrible pandemic. Gracious God, bring healing to your earth, we pray. Let us pray to the Lord. And always for the poor, for those who constantly struggle to make ends meet that we may be moved to action on their behalf, let us pray to the Lord. And for our country, for its healing, for its well-being, for its continued future in your grace, let us pray to the Lord. And please take the prayers in your heart that you wish to place in the heart of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, we are never alone, even when we are wandering off on our own. You are looking for us. You are there always to embrace us. We give you praise and thanksgiving, gracious God. In the name of Jesus, we praise and thanks, give you thanksgiving in the power of the Holy Spirit. We praise you and give you thanksgiving, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Sisters, brothers, pray. Pray that your sacrifice and mine be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. This we pray through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human family, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all of the angels and with the entire church throughout the world this Thursday, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And please pray with me. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them like the dewfall. That they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and willingly entered into his passion, he took bread, gave you thanks and praise, gracious God, shared the bread with his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving you thanks and praise, gracious God, shared it with his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy Dolan, our Bishop. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Remember your servant, Kyle, whom you called from this world to yourself. Grant that, she, grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection.
through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share the Lord's peace with one another. Knowledge the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Good Shepherd who is always looking for us to bestow his love. Blessed are we called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Just a little reminder, we ask people on this side of the church to come up for Holy Communion first and try to maintain the distance asked, and then the people on that side of the church will come up.
But let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what you promise. This we pray in the name of Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace. Stay safe. Would like to say just a word of acknowledgement to my brother, Father Frank Desiderio, who wanted to be at Mass today, and of course, Father James Deluzio, who is our ever faithful servant here at church.